With the form and text form field widget you can validate fields and show error messages and in this case you can then validate emails, passwords and usernames. And after it you can click on submit and if the email is correct then it is validated and it will hide the error message. If you are new here subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. In the last tutorial we have already created three text fields and I have also created here this button and if we click on it then we want to validate the content of our text fields. If you never have done anything with text fields, I recommend to watch also the last tutorial, which you can find in the description box of this video here. Basically, we have here three text fields and they have some decoration and an unchanged handler. And every time we get then this, what the user types here inside, and this will be then stored into variables. So in this case, for the username, it will be stored here within the username string. Now that we want to validate these text fields, we need to simply change the text field to a text form field and we do it also at the other locations for the email and password. Then we go to one of our text fields, so for example this username, and we add here a validator. And here with this value we get then the text of our text field. And now we simply check here if we have at least four characters. And if we have not four characters, at least in this text field, then we return here string. Otherwise, we return here null. And if we return here null, this means that this text field is valid. And if we return here a string, then this means that we have here an error for our text field and that the user needs to change this text field and needs to put here, for example, four characters at least inside. The next thing we want to do is if we click on this button, then we want to execute this validator. And what we do therefore is we go here to our build username and we simply wrap this list view around a form widget. So simply put here a form widget around and then you can set here inside a form key. And this form key we create here at the state level. So we create a new global key and here inside we put the form state inside. And the form key now enables us to access here the form state. And this means that we can access then all these text form fields here inside. And then we can access here these validator methods, which we put inside of our text form fields. Therefore, simply copy here this name and we go then to our submit button. And if we click on the submit button, then this on clicked handler is called. And here inside we simply call then the form key and get the current state. And then you can call here the method validate. And this is the magical method, which basically check here all of these text form validators. And if this validator is not returning null, then it simply shows the error message. In this case, this message here. So let's try it out. I click here on the submit button and you see we get here the error message. And this is because this validator doesn't return null, it simply returns here this string. And if we have here at least four characters inside, then it will return here the null and the error message will also go away again. And this is everything done by the validate method automatically for us. And now we can simply check here if it is valid. So in this case, if the username is valid and then we simply want to call here the form key current state. And here we want to actually call the save method. And the save method will call then all the unsaved properties within our text form fields. So you can simply change this on change to on saved. And you also do it here at the other locations. And now these unsaved properties are only executed if we actually call here manually this save method. And this will then put the value which we have in this field and put it then inside of this field here at our state level. And the last thing we want to do is to actually print the content which we have here in our field. So we can simply access here this username field at the top which holds then our username. And in this case, we create here simply a snack bar where I simply create a text where we put then this message here inside with our username and we also give it some background color. And then we simply call here the scaffold messenger of context to actually show our snack bar.
If the scaffold messenger is not working, you can also call here scaffold instead. And now if we click here on the submit button, then you see that this username is put here to our snack bar and we also can change here the username and then the new value go here inside. However, if we have here less characters, then this is not executed because it is not valid and therefore this code is not executed. Now we want to look at the email validation and also the password validation. Let's start with the password validation. So we create here again our valid data property and here we get again this value of our text field. And then we check here that the password has at least seven characters. And if it has not these seven characters, then we return here this error message. Otherwise we return here null for the successful case. Now let's try it out. So I have here at least seven characters inside and then everything is fine. However, if I have here less characters inside, then we also show here this error message. And now if everything is here valid, the username and the password, then we can also show here next to the username, the password. And now if I click here on this button, then you see that we have the username and also the password within our snack bar. Now we also want to add here for our email field, this validator. And here inside I have then an email pattern which checks if our email is valid and this is what you find in the internet. And from this pattern we create a regular expression and then you can basically check if the regular expression is not matching here. And this code here basically checks if our email is valid. So the content of our text field should be the same as this pattern here. And like you can see within this pattern, we have this add symbol and you also need to have a dot and so on. So there is like some things which you need to have within a valid email. And in the case that it is not valid, then we return here an error message and it says enter a valid email. Otherwise we return here null for the successful case. Back on our submit button, we also add here after our password again this email. And now we can click here on submit and you see that the password and username are valid. However, this email is not valid and then he will simply call here this error message, enter a valid email. Therefore simply add here a valid email and then click again on submit and you see that we have here now the successful case and it is also showing in our snack bar. Lastly, I want to show you some more tricks what you can do. So within your form field, you have this auto validate mode and you can set it to auto validate mode on user interaction. And what this is doing, it is basically updating here our UI automatically. If we change here from one state to another state, then he is simply doing it without the submit button and changes here the error message also puts here the successful message inside. And if we don't have this here inside and I change here then this text, you see there is no change. We always have to click on the submit button to actually have here the change directly in our UI. And this is what you can put inside if you like. Another thing what you can do is to put, for example, in your text form fields a max length. And if you do this, then this here can only have at least 30 characters. So we cannot have more characters than 30. And with this, you can make sure that the username has maximum 30 characters. In case we have here an error message displayed, for example, for our username, you can also change the color of this arrow. And therefore you simply call here the error border within the decoration of your username field. And here inside we set, for example, a border side with a purple color. And you also need to set here the focused error border. And here you also can set a purple color inside. And lastly, you also need to change here the arrow style. So this is about the text, which is then displayed here, this username, for example, and also this one. This will be also then in purple. And now if I hot reload, you see that everything is in purple. And also if we have this focused, therefore we have put this here inside, it is also in purple. By the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Another thing I want to show you is also that you can add here multiple validators within your validator property. So let's say I have here this username put inside and the password and I click on submit. 
and then you see enter a valid email. If you don't like this error message, then you can also have, for example, this case for an empty case where you simply add here another error message like enter an email or something. And now if this email text field is empty, then we return here instead this error message. So let's try it out. I click on submit. You see we have this error message. And if I add here one character at least, then it changes here to this error message. Now every time if we click here on the submit button, then there is still this keyboard open. If you don't like this behavior, you can also put here within your submit button this focus scope unfocus and this will then unfocus all the text fields and will also hide the keyboard. And now if I click here on submit, it will then hide the keyboard. So this is also what you can do and this is a preference. I don't like this here for this case. However, you can also put it inside. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!